We started off using drones in Malawi as UNICEF, as was mentioned, because of the HIV epidemic. I'm not pressing hard enough. So nearly 9% of adults and 2% of children are living with HIV in Malawi. And studies show that 30% of children living with HIV who are not on treatment will die before their first birthday. In Malawi today, only 53% of children are currently on treatment who are eligible for it. And that's resulted in 4,100 deaths last year amongst children due to HIV. Ideally, children who are exposed to HIV should be tested within two months. And within Malawi, we have over 400 health facilities collecting dried blood spots. This is a picture of a sample um, that are sent to one of only nine reference laboratories capable of doing DNA testing. And that transport of samples is primarily by motorbike. The results are then sent back to the health center, both by hard copy as well as SMS printer, and given to the parent. And if the child's HIV positive, then they're started immediately on treatment. So it sounds like a good system. But unfortunately, Malawi's road infrastructure is very poor. It's also costly to manage that transportation system. Just the collection of samples is about $2 million a year. And during the rainy season, um, we have disasters such as collapsed bridges, and many facilities become reachable only by boat. And by boat, I mean this type of boat, um, or by foot. So because of those challenges, parents end up waiting almost um, a month to six weeks to learn the results of their children's diagnosis. And that's a very long time in the life of a children, child who's living with HIV. As was mentioned, in 2016, we then worked with partners, um, Maternet and Village Reach, to conduct a feasibility study on the use of drones to transport laboratory samples. And we conducted, over the course of two weeks, approximately 50 autonomous beyond visual line of sight flights between a peri-urban health center and one of the national laboratories, fortunately without any adverse events. So we're now moved into phase two, working in two districts to pilot an optimized diagnostic supply chain, which integrates the existing system of motorbikes, drones, point of care diagnostics, another very cool technology for early infant diagnosis of HIV, viral load for HIV and TB in order to improve access to care and treatment. And you can see here, color coded by red are the facilities that are particularly difficult to reach. We're aiming to really affect the turnaround time for EID viral load and TB specimen collection. Both the initial period of the collection of samples and their delivery to the laboratories, but also their return. And our approach is taking a health system strengthening approach. So we worked with JSI to analyze all of the data around diagnostics as well as the health supply chain in those two districts um, to come up with scenarios that would really optimize the system. And we hope to be moving into the implementation of that phase shortly with USAID and with Wingcopter, so really extending the work that is being done here in Tanzania. We've had the pleasure of working with an incredibly committed government, um, so thank you to my civil aviation colleagues who are here today and who you'll be hearing more from later in the meeting, um, as well as a number of other ministries. So it was a very careful process to get government endorsement that was very widespread. And we've been working closely with civil aviation to develop the regulatory framework for Malawi, which again you'll hear more of um, tomorrow. And to establish a cadre of drone experts for Malawi, so we supported a team from the Ministry of Health, Civil Aviation, and the Ministry of Defense to attend a two-week training in the U.S. that was particularly tailored toward their needs so that they are the experts within Malawi. Let's go back. So moving on, um, I wanted to also take a moment to talk about emergency response, another area that we're working in. 
and 2015 Malawi was affected by unprecedented flooding. Over 100,000 people were displaced, and the images that were provided were things such as these from um, light aircraft. The government did not have enough information to really respond as rapidly as they would have liked. So in 2017, they asked UNICEF to respond with drones. So we were able, within 24 hours, to launch drones to acquire data, to provide that to government. And to, sorry, I'm not pressing hard enough. And to community members so that they could assess the level of damage that had been um, affected within their areas. As part of that, we're also working with government on flood preparedness. So again, flying drones to acquire data and to create models that will help communities better plan for flooding. And we've been working with government on integrating drones into the National Contingency Response Plan and worked with WE Robotics to conduct a simulation exercise that involved government officials, drone pilots, data analysts, and search and rescue teams. And based on that, drones are now an official part of that national response plan. And all the work that we've done, we've worked with communities, whether it's through demonstration days at um, schools or marketplaces. You know, it's ensuring that community members are involved. And most importantly, working with community members to identify their own challenges and ways in which drones can actually address the problems that they experience on a daily basis and improve their lives and the lives of children in the community. So thank you, that's it for me.